over the last number of weeks we've been discussing uh, what really is a question that we should question ourselves every day, not just once a week or once a month. And that question simply is, who are we serving? And, uh, or more importantly, whom are we servants to? And uh, we, we've talked about how the scripture is very clear that it's impossible to serve two masters. I don't know if you've ever gone to work and you had two bosses and one boss says one thing and the other boss says something else and you do one thing and one boss gets mad at you and you go do the other and the other boss is mad. You should have listened to me. You can't serve two bosses. You cannot serve two masters. It's impossible. Either, either uh, we will hate the one and love the other or else we will, uh, we will hold to one and despise the other. That, that's just a natural thing. You can't. Uh, you can't do that, and, and with, with any success, you can't do that. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and, and again, I mentioned this before, uh, probably one of my favorite scriptures, uh, Paul was writing to the church, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3 says this: For I say, through grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And I believe it was Wednesday night we were talking about the measure of faith that God has put in each one of us. And, and, uh, but I'm not going in that direction. But verse 3 is so important because we understand what verse 1 and 2 says. That I, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That is understanding. And we, we, we get that. We've got to submit ourselves to God. But verse 3, he says to every man among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. And, and the first thing that comes to our mind is, I'm not proud. Because that's kind of what he's saying in a sense. In, in, in the visual sense, he's, he's saying about pride. But that's not what he's saying. When you first read that, it's, it's saying to humble yourself. But he's not really even saying to humble ourselves. He said for, for you and I to think soberly or with the right mind or with, a, with, with, with common Here's a missing phrase of the world, common sense. And, and he said to, I'm saying by the grace of God to you that, that not to think of yourself high, more highly than you ought to think, but to think soberly. But, but when you take that text by itself, it means one thing. But when you put it in with the other texts that we read, it, it really becomes a, a vital part of the scripture. Because he was telling us to, to uh, uh, seek the will of God and, and follow the will of God. To sacrifice our life. To, to give ourselves over to God. And, and, and all these things. That, and, and that we would live according to the way of God. And then he says, don't think of yourself so high. Well, when I decide. Everybody say, I decide. When I decide my will overrides God's will, or my desire overrides God's desire, because that is what the will of God is, the desire of God. That is what your will, your desire. You, we have strong-willed people. We have people who, who have these strong desires to do something. Whether it's right or wrong, whether you call them stubborn or obstinate, whatever you call them, what it is, it boils down to simply their desires. Mm -hmm. They desire to be aggressive. They desire to be uh, forthright. And, and, and other people desire their, their desire to be passive and their desires to be on the, back, uh, the backdrop of everything. So when my will or my desire overrides God's will or God's desire, I begin to think myself higher than God. Now notice the wording here. He goes back in verse 1 and 2. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto him. Which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
And then he said, don't think so high of yourself that you elevate your will and your desire above the will and desire of God. You see, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve yourself and God at the same time. You, you can't serve uh, uh, you, yourself your, with your will and your desire and, and also please God at the same time unless you're pleasing God with your life. Does that make sense? Amen. I'm thinking myself higher than I am of my master. Amen. I desire to satisfy my lusts that are within me instead of the wishes of the Lord. And so now I'm no longer thinking soberly. I'm no longer thinking properly. I am no longer submitting myself. I am no longer doing the will of God. That self, and if every one of us can sit here this morning and say, I've got a self. <laughs> Amen. I didn't say say it, Kenneth. I said we all have it. And, and so that self-spirit that is part of man has to be reckoned with. Uh, Amen. Because Scripture tells us you cannot serve God and mammon. So we want to think automatically, well, I can't serve a, a leader of the country and God at the same time. He's not talking about that. He is talking about serving myself or God. See, I can serve myself as long as I'm serving God first. If I'm lining myself up below the wishes of God, but when I take my desires and I want and I'm going to and I am, above what God wants, then I become his master in my mind. Now, we don't think like that, do we? You, I, I can almost hear people saying, well, pastor, I'm not like that at all. You, your words and your thinking may not be like that, but your actions are showing it. And I'm not pointing people, I'm not saying somebody's actions. I'm saying when we find ourselves, in a, and this is why I, uh, earlier I said that it's not a weekly thing that we ask ourselves, who am I serving? It has to be a daily thing. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not living week by week. I am living hour by hour, moment by moment. I'm alive today. My flesh, like I said on Wednesday, my flesh can rise up today. Amen. I can submit it tomorrow and Tuesday rise up again. Because I'm not reckoning with my will, my desire, my lusts. So you cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. The, the choice between who we're going to serve, amen, is really nobody's but ourselves. Amen. The devil cannot make you, amen, choose. And somebody can, somebody can, uh, you know, come before you and, and say, you must choose this. And, but nobody has that right to. Now, if I come or, or somebody comes and puts their fist in my face and, say, and, and says, you know, do this or I'm going to punch you, that's still my choice whether to do it or not. Can we punch them back? No, you can't punch them back. <laughs> this is just an analogy. The pastor can't make you choose. I can stand behind the pulpit and I can expose the Bible and I can share with you and I can teach you and, and, and I can lay it out on the line and I can, I can beg you and I can preach and I can teach and I, can, I can't sing. But I, I can bring that all out, but it's totally up to you and I to choose even who we're going to serve. Your boss cannot make you do anything. You know, we, we talk about right, workmen's rights and all that. Amen. It doesn't matter how bad something is or uh, how bad the threats are. You know, if you don't do this, you're fired. Well, you just, you have a choice. That's right. You still have that choice. I'm not going to do it, so fire me. Then we'll deal with it. Even Jesus will not impose his will on you. He will not come and say, you must do this. He wants you to do that. The Ten Commandments are, are, are commandments, and this is the law. This is what's going Why did he give the Ten Commandments? So that man can live proper. That's right. That's all it is. Why do we have laws in the land? So we can live right. Why do we have speed limits on the highway? Because we know our studies have shown that, that, that it, excessive speeding will kill people, and not just yourself, but other people who are totally innocent. So the choice is always going to be ours. 
Many people fall into trouble and then cry out, the devil made them do something. Mm. Or they fall into trouble and, and somebody caused them the trouble. And there's really no truth in that statement. Amen. Although the devil does have power, amen, he may reveal it in some of his actions. He cannot force himself on anybody. Amen. He, he, can, he can float around or, or, or have one of his angels float around us or, or, or you know, direct some things around us, but he cannot force himself onto us at all. People can become possessed, and most of the time they're possessed because they delve into that stuff. Amen. It, it's not just, a, oh, the devil comes on them and that's it. It's because they're messing around with stuff like that. And you see, the choice is always going to be ours. If I serve Jesus, I don't have to worry about the devil possessing me. Amen. And if I serve Jesus, I don't have to worry about falling in sin. If I serve Jesus, uh, I don't have to worry about failing him. Why? Because my mind, my desire is always following after Jesus. Amen. The choice is completely up to us. Amen. Over the last few weeks, we've looked at how Christianity has changed and, uh, over the years, how people have changed and, and how perception has changed and, and how dedication has changed. Amen. The early church, uh, compared to the latter day church, uh, there's no comparison. Amen. Because, uh, amen, back then they were so dedicated and, and over the years we've watered stuff down, we've become so comfortable and, and so soft spiritually. Then when something comes our way, we just can't take it anymore. We get offended, we get upset, we get, we get bothered, we get hurt, we, 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 we just walk away. Yeah. And I've said this for many, many years, uh, all the excuses, I can't pay my rent, so I'm not going to serve God. Amen. Why is it God's fault you can't pay rent? Amen. In our days that we're living, and this is where it's led to right now, we know the world. Amen. Right is wrong, and wrong now is right. Uh, commitment to anything, uh, amen, has gone by the way of the dodo bird. You know, you look at marriages falling apart, uh, people transiting jobs and transiting this, uh, and, and there's no commitment anymore. Mm -hmm. amen. And where is the church in this? Because that spirit from the world floats into the, it's allowed to come into the church. Uh, and, and there's lack of commitment to, in our giving, lack of commitment in our tenants, lack of commitment. And I'm not talking about people. I'm talking in general terms. In general terms, there's such a lack of commitment, to, amen, even in the church, amen. So we've got to be so careful that, that we make up our minds and, and make sure we know who we're serving. Don't look to yourself. I've got to take, and that is the way of the world. I've got to take care of me. Don't tell me what to do. Don't correct me. You offended me. You, you said something that I didn't like. Well, how can everybody tell you everything you like? You're going to say something to somebody sometime that they're not going to like. And you don't mean to do it. Sometimes you do. The writer to the uh, Hebrews, uh, the saints, uh, he told the readers to lay aside every sin and weight that can so easily beset us and, and, and put us down and back us up in our endeavor to find perfection. So, so he said, lay these things aside. They're not sin. But there are things that, that, that in our life that he said, lay aside because uh, they'll stop you. They'll slow down your walk. They're not sinful. They're, they're not in the Ten Commandments. They're, 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 you're not killing anybody. You're not, you're, you're, you're not stealing from somebody or you're, you're not cursing at somebody. But there's still things that slow us down. And they cause us to struggle in our endeavor to serve it. And the writer said, put them aside. Put them down. Why? Because he's interested in our salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. I said, there's enough in the world to trip us up. There's enough in the world to cause us to pause. There's enough strife around us and circumstances that we've got to deal with that, that is mind-boggling. Right. So if I could take something off my plate and lay it down somewhere, 
I mean, if I could take something out of my life that, that uh, there's nothing wrong with it per se. But I've got to make a choice. Am I serving God with that? Or, eh, that's kind of enjoyable. But it's slow, it's hindering my walk. But I really, really, I have, I have very little uh, things to enjoy in life. So I'm going to just enjoy this. That's, that's our excuse. I don't have many, uh, what's that word? Um, many, many things that, uh, uh, I forget what that word is now. Things that we want to hang on to. Uh, and, and they're not, they're, sometimes they're, they're bad and sometimes they're almost bad. And we just... Huh? Habits. Ha well, habits, yes, but that, that's, uh, we'll use habits. I, I don't have many bad habits, but this one I have because I don't have many others. So we, we justify having it. And we know it, it, it clouds our walk. We know it puts a fog before our eyes. We, we can't see spiritual clearness. We can't get definite answers from God because, and we know it's because of that, but, but we enjoy it so much. And I have so, so many little other enjoyments that I have. I've given, but I'm better than so-and-so. Mm -hmm. At least I don't do what she does. Mm -hmm. Without putting your hands up, without nodding or blinking, oh, did anybody okay. ever say that? Or did anybody ever think that? Yeah. That at least I'm not doing what so-and-so is doing. What? Oh. No, no, I, I'm not looking for answers. You see, our world is so messed up that, that we stand in the mirror, the spiritual mirror, and say, well, I am so, look how right I am. Look how right I am compared to them. And, and, and instead of looking the other way to Jesus and comparing ourselves to him, we look to darkness and say, well, at least I'm brighter than they are. At least I'm more spiritual than them. The promise to keep us in the ark of safety. Amen. It is not a right that God gave us this promise. It's not a right. Just because God says he'll take care of us. That's not a right. That's a privilege. And when, when God says that, that, that he'll be, uh, fight our battles. That, that's, not a, that's, that's not a right. So, so I get somewhere and I start a fight and say, okay, God, fight my battles. It's a privilege, amen, to have God on our side. And, and we, we want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, and how we want to do it. And then we look to the genie called Jesus and say, you promised, their word says. It's a gift. It, it's, a, it, it's not to be messed with. It's to be honored. And so how do I honor that? By taking my will and laying my will aside and doing what I can to do His will. And then the privileges of, of serving God are now there because I'm doing what I can to serve Him. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. uh, he's not my magic genie or, or, or my magic uh, uh, you know, wand that I can just strike and say, here you go. This is what I need. Take care of me. Romans chapter 5, Paul said in verse 17, For if one, by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness and to eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So what he was saying was we have this grace. God has given us this grace, but you notice what he said also through righteousness. We obtain the grace through our righteousness. And it's not my righteousness. It's not your righteousness. It's his righteousness. 
So in other words, if I'm living according to his will, his grace will take care of me. And if, if I'm living the righteous life, and, and by the righteous life, it's saying I'm laying my things aside and I'm going to do his will. And then I live in this thing called right living, not half right living. Not, not, not part of me or most of me. It's right living. And because I'm living right, the grace of God is able to carry me. We call and the world calls on the grace of God to be there all the time. And then the world calls and says, I, I want the grace of God. The grace of God is going to uh, you know, help you. And the grace of God is going to take care of you. But not if we're not living right. That's what he's saying here. It's through the righteousness or the right living that we have this grace. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? See, the, the call of humanity or Christianity is, I have the Holy Ghost. I can speak in tongues. That's my evidence. I, I, can, I go to church. That's my evidence. But what he's saying here, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace would abound? Or do, we, do we live according to our ways so that we can say the grace is working around me? He said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? See, we, we can't do that. We, and, and we're not called to that. Even the grace of God is there if we slip up. Everybody say slip up. Slip up does not mean taking a jump off the cliff. Slip up does not mean stepping in front of a car. Slip means you slip. You make a mistake. And we're all, hello, prone to mistakes. And so the grace can carry us in those times. But if I am walking the mistake on purpose, because I am choosing. And you might say, well, I didn't choose that. Well, because I'm choosing my own desires, it's going to lead me to where I do sin. And I'm not doing what I need to do not to sin. See, the Holy Ghost is, is not given to absolve us or make us immune to sin. Even off we look at ourselves, we and again we see the good in us. We see all the, the little portion, the little dot, the little light in our lives and say, Wow, I'm so brilliant. And so that brilliance in me, that little bit of brilliance, it overrides all the negative and all the darkness uh, even in, and all the bad, it outweighs it. The right in us offsets the wrongs, but it just simply doesn't work like that. The only freedom we have, amen, is our obedience to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't like, again, you've heard me say this, we don't like that word obedient, do we? No. It is a, such a harsh, strong term. Mm -hmm. But that's what Scripture is calling us to do. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you're offended. Doesn't matter whether you like the word or don't like it. That's, that's neither here nor there. I don't like driving 100 kilometers an hour in a, in a 100 kilometer an hour zone. I don't like it. But I'm obedient. If I'm disobedient, I get the speeding ticket. Saul was called to be Lord, uh, uh, of the Lord to be king of the people. And, and again, man didn't call Saul. I mean, there, there's no democratic vote. There, like in our system, you vote for a prime minister. Samuel went to Saul and told him that the Lord even has sent him to anoint Saul as king. He instructed Saul to listen and hear the voice of God. He advised Saul to go to Amalek and, and utterly destroy. You know the story. I've taught it so many times. Uh, and destroy everything and don't spare them. He especially told him to kill everybody. And this was to be retribution from the Lord on behalf, or from, from uh, Saul on behalf of the Lord. And he wasn't doing it on his own. He was doing the Lord's work. He was doing the Lord's calling. 
And you know the story. He didn't obey. He left some things alive and, and used that excuse. Well, we can use the animals for a sacrifice unto the Lord. He said, I spared the best to sacrifice the Lord. The rest I utterly destroyed. Now, we, we know this scripture. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. As iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Now, we, we look at that and say, wow, that's deep. Well, let's, let's apply it to our lives, okay? God has called us to be Christians. Mm -hmm. And he's called us to utterly destroy some things in our life. And he's called us to separate ourselves from the world. And he has called us to live holy and righteous. And he has called us to lay our will down and pick up his will and his desires. And, and when we fail, he's given us grace. He's given us a, the abundance of grace when we trip up and fail. But if he was willing to do that to Saul and reject him as king, what about you and I? And I know there's grace of God. I understand that. But is there a moment or time in our lives that we don't choose his will anymore? That he said, I'm going to reject you as a Christian. See, those are the days we're living. We want the days. You go back to the book of Acts. And we want the miracles. We, we want the healings. We want the thousands to come in. Well, that just doesn't happen. There's another side. And God is always a God of balance. When you see great things take place, there's great sacrifice. That's right. And when you see great things take place, there's great trouble on the other side. Mm. So if you want to, the miracles, the signs, the wonders the, in abundance, you better be ready for the trouble to come against you. Yeah. And we're not willing to take his will. Why should we think he's willing to give us his blessing? That's right. And the only one we're fooling is the one we look at in the mirror and say, well, I've got this little light shining in my eye. Many times we have such good intentions. We may be sincere in our endeavors, yet the calling of God does not remain our priority. On Sunday, we go home and say, I'm going to be better. On Wednesday, we go home. I'm going to be better. Mm -hmm. But something happens on the way home. Mm -hmm. oh. Something happens within us. We, we feel because we're with one another. And that's why church attendance is so strong. Because we're together. Not just the word of God, but we're together. Yeah. And we glean from one another. Just, and not words. Not just words. But we glean from one another's spirit. We're encouraged. But whether we feel encouraged or not, we are encouraged by the body getting together. Mm -hmm. That's why it's vital. We need to be here as much as possible because they might shut everything down. Mm -hmm. and, and, and somebody said this week, somebody here, and, and I know what they're saying. I'm not saying it negatively. They, they, at the end of the last lockdown, they were almost going crazy without church. And I, and I know the term crazy is a little just wording, but, but they didn't like it, and none of us did. So if we're not prepared for another lockdown, and it takes place, okay? So if we're not built up, if we don't start choosing Jesus, and there's no Sunday church to pick us up for the week, and yeah, the online is okay if we watch it online. It's a substitute, but it's not the real thing. That's right. Well, coming to church, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to say this right or not. Coming to church sometimes is a substitute to living for God. Oh. Right. See, it's our little answer. We're coming to church and I'm okay. Mm. But the rest of the week, we're not living for God. Mm -hmm. It's my way. It's my will. It's my desire. 
And Jesus said that it's no longer going to be your desire. It's got to be my desire. Because your desire, you're choosing you over me. And this is what we're talking about. Who are you becoming servants to? Sometimes we don't even see it. Because we're, we've been doing it for so much, we don't even see it anymore. Our, our spirit is, is seared from seeing it because we're accustomed to it. And, and we, we don't understand it. We don't see it, so we don't do anything about it. Or we'll try and say, well, I can't do it. Because I, I, I didn't change overnight. You didn't get back, you don't backslide overnight either. You don't get spiritually blinded overnight either. And I'm not making fun of anybody, okay? So don't think that. If you ever had cataracts, they don't come overnight. I know. It's a slow process until finally you realize I can't see. Everything's cloudy. At night I'm driving and, all, and it seems like all of a sudden, but what happened was all of a sudden you just can't see. Yep. And, and, and it's just a, a slow process. Okay, so the same spiritual, we get spiritual cataracts. We don't, it, it just slowly, and it doesn't just jump in front of us like blindfold. It creeps on us. Mm. Our will, because your will is so brilliant that it understands you're going to notice if you jump. So it says, I'm going to sneak my will. Slowly in. Mm -hmm. Until you don't even notice you're blind spiritually. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yep. That's, what, that's what's taking place. So we've got to understand in these days, with enough pressure around us, confusion around us, strife around us, we've got to make sure who we are serving. Am I serving me? Now, we're not serving the devil. We're not out demon worshiping. We're not serving the world going out there and, and partying. But who are we serving? There's still the biggest, the biggest enemy is right between your ears and your body. It's in you. Who are you serving? See, we sneak around, we come to church, and we think it's okay. And, and, and the substitute of church instead of living for God. There's going to come a day. Many are going to come to me in that day and say, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not preached? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done many wonderful works? And I'm going to put it in layman's terms. Have I not witnessed to people? Have I not told my friends about, about you? Have, 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 I not live, have I not gone to church Sunday mornings? Did I not go Wednesday? Did I not put a little bit of, uh, a few pennies in the offering to keep the church doors open? Did I not do that? See, that's substituted for coming to church, Jesus. But we're not living for God. We're just substituting our attendance. And then he's going to say to those people, he's not talking about the world here. He's not talking about the world. He's not talking about the sinners. These are people who live for him. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Get away from me. I don't know who you are. Because you work iniquity. Well, have I not been baptized? Have I not repented? Have I not been baptized? Did I not receive the Holy Ghost? Well, Lord, why do I have the Holy Ghost? And, and the Lord's going to say, did you listen to the Holy Ghost? Did you follow after the Holy Ghost? Or was the Holy Ghost dormant in you? You see, just because you got the Holy Ghost, we tell people in the world it's a great thing, but just because you've got the Holy Ghost, you're not going to listen to it. It's just there. I have a bottle of water that I'm just dying to drink right now because my throat is dry, my throat is sore. But it does me no good sitting here. 
Until I drink it. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost can sit inside of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I spoke in tongues whenever. You can speak in tongues every day and not listen to it. That's right. You can hear the voice of God, it doesn't mean you're listening to it. That's right. Just like your boss at work can say, sweep the floor, and you say, I'm not sweeping the floor. Your boss might fire you if you don't sweep the floor. It's like Lance going to work and, and, and the boss says, Lance, make 100, 100 uh, hamburgers today. I don't feel like it. <laughs> I want to cook steak today. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I deserve to make steak instead of hamburgers because steak is a better quality cut, better, better meal, more expensive, and I'm going to make steak. Mm -hmm. And so he's got it in his mind. So the boss comes along and said, man, I needed 100 hamburgers and not steak. You're fired. And he's got a right to do that, right? Yes. Well, the Lord's the same way. The Holy Ghost tells us some things. Hello? The Holy Ghost tells us some things. And we hear and we don't listen. And there's going to come a day since you're fired. We come to church wanting to hear about blessings. We want to really, and I'm trying, and I want to, and, and I just can't get off it. We've got to wake up. Who are we serving? John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come? He will guide you into all truth. He's not going to push you into truth. He's going to guide you there. He shall not speak to himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, shall he speak and he shall show you things to come. There's such a pull from the world, pull from Satan and pull from self. They're pulling against the desires of God. Amen. And the spirit of God is in us and it's pulling us away. And I got some bad news for us this morning. This is a dilemma that's going to be with us until we draw our last breath. So we've got to learn now to get rid of it, to deal with it. Timothy, Paul instructs to separate from the things of the world. The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. See, just because we say we're apostolic, just because we say we're one God, just because we say we repent, we're baptized in Jesus' name, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, just because we say it, he said, it's not just about that, it's about departing from iniquity, departing from sin, departing from disobedience. Well, where am I disobeying? By choosing my will over his will. It, it's back to Lance, poor Lance making steaks. So that's not the will of the boss. Because maybe, maybe Lance doesn't understand this, but I want a hundred hamburgers because I've got... I got a hundred kids coming that can't eat steak, but they love hamburgers. See, the Lord has some things for us. We don't understand them all. So he wants us to follow his desire, his will, so he can elevate us into what he wants us to be. He said, in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. Those are the blessings. But there's also wood and earth and some to honor and also some to dishonor. Mm -hmm. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Does anybody here want to be a vessel of honor to the Lord? Amen. Do, do you want when the Lord says, do you want him to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant? Do you want him to say, I'm pleased to let you into my kingdom? Mm -hmm. Amen. Do you want him to look at you and, and be so proud of you? Or do you want him to look at you and say, dishonorable? And when that happens, and people are not going to blame themselves. They're going to say, he's a judging God. Of course he is. Because he's coming as a judge. I didn't deserve. Well, you didn't listen either, did you? 
So you do, do deserve it. If any man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet or ready for the master's use. You know what? The, one of the greatest things in this world is that you can be used.